Hey guys, welcome back to Geometry. We're going to take another look today at proving segment relationships. Now, for any proof, you always want to start with the given information as your first statement and given for your first reason. You always need to end exactly on whatever you're being asked to prove. Okay, so let's say you're asked to prove that uh, A is equal to B, and you end up with B is equal to A. You still need one more statement to flip that around to have the right proof, to have exactly what you're asked to prove. You need to move one step at a time. Only, only, only combine statements that have the same reason. If you need multiple properties to justify a step, then you need to split that step into multiple steps. Um, you need to justify every single step. You need a property, a definition, a theorem, something that says you're allowed to make that change. You can't just say, well, it's obvious. Look at the diagram. You need a property to back it up. Now, the trouble that a lot of students have is determining exactly what property or definition justifies that step. Don't focus so much on what that step says. Focus on how that step is different. What has changed from previous steps? And that will help you determine what property, definition, theorem, postulate, or whatever justifies that step. So let's take a look at some of the properties that we have so far. Okay, we have the addition property of equality. It says if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. Subtraction property of equality. It says if A equals B, then A minus C equals B minus C. The multiplication property of equality. It says if A equals B, then A times C equals B times C. And the division property of equality says if A equals B, then A divided by C equals B divided by C, as long as C does not divide by zero. Now, guys, all of these properties are all well and good. Uh, however, it might be a little bit more helpful to have these, instead of just a textbook definition, give them in plain speech. All four of these properties pretty much say the exact same thing. They say that you can do whatever arithmetic operation you want as long as you perform the same operation on both sides and you don't whoop, and you don't divide by zero. If you divide by zero, that changes a lot of things, it breaks a lot of rules, and it can make some weird stuff happen. So just don't do it. Okay? Otherwise, you can do whatever arithmetic operation you want as long as you do the same thing on both sides. Okay, next up, we have this A equals A as the reflexive property. Okay, and this seems kind of silly to say that something is equal to itself. And I agree with you guys. For an algebraic proof, yeah, something equal to itself doesn't do us a whole lot of good. But later on this year, we're going to be asked to prove stuff like this. Okay? We're going to be asked to prove, see these two triangles? We're going to be given this diagram, and we're going to be asked to prove that this blue triangle is congruent, identical to this pink triangle. Okay? Well, guys, what helps us do that is the fact that they share this common side, AD. Now, I can't just say, well, look at the diagram. They share this side, so that's the same length on both triangles. I want to be able to say that AD, segment AD, on the pink triangle is exactly the same as segment AD on that blue triangle. Okay? Well, take a look at what we have, guys. We have something congruent to itself, okay, or equal to itself as well. That's what the reflexive property does for us. So early on, with algebraic proofs, the reflexive property wasn't a whole lot of use. Once we get into the more advanced ge geometric proofs, it is going to be very helpful. Next up, we have the symmetric property. The symmetric property says if A equals B, then B equals A. In plain speech, what this says is you can reverse an equation over that equal sign. You can flip it. The transitive property says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So what you want to think about, guys, is what's changing from our hypothesis here, from the if statement, to what happens in our conclusion. Well, the difference between these two statements is that the Bs are missing. I go from A and C both equaling B to A and C are equaling each other. Okay, the difference here is if two values are equal to the same value, then those two values are equal to one another. Okay, you can cut out the middleman if two things are equal to the same thing and say those two things are equal to each other. Next up, we have the definition of congruent segment. So what does it mean to be congruent? Well, two segments are congruent if and only if 
their measures are the same. Now remember, if you have the bar over top, you're talking about the segment. Without the bar on top, you're talking about the length of that segment. So the segments are congruent if their lengths are the same and vice versa. So this if and only if, remember, it allows us to go in both directions. So if I have the segments are congruent, I have the lengths are the same. If I have the lengths are the same, then I can say the segments are congruent. Next up, we have the segment addition postulate. And the segment addition postulate says, if B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So a diagram might help us here. So here's A and C, and here's B. Actually, I'm going to move B. Okay, and remember, between means on that same line. So if it's between those two, that means that if I add this piece plus this piece, I get the whole thing, okay? And that kind of makes pretty good sense, I hope. Okay, if you have a segment that's broken into two pieces, the sum of the length of those pieces is equal to the length of the whole thing, okay? One piece plus the other piece is equal to the whole thing. Then finally, we have the midpoint theorem, which some people, some textbooks will refer to as the definition of a midpoint. Either one's good. If M is the midpoint of AB, then AM, segment AM, is congruent segment MB. So here's AB, and I have M as my midpoint. If I know that M is the midpoint, then I know it's perfectly in the center, and those two pieces are congruent. So if there's a midpoint of a segment, then the two halves are congruent to one another. These are the properties that we have that we're going to use to justify each of our, um, each of our statements. Now, when you're trying to think about what property is being used, Remember, focus on how you're changing previous statements to get to where you are now. Don't focus on just what that line says. Focus on how that's different from previous lines. Okay? Now, one thing I do want to take a look at. Substitution property and the transitive property are very similar properties. They're both talking about replacing parts of an equation. But substitution talks about just replacing a little piece. Okay? So right here. I have A plus B equals C, and B equals D. I can put D in place of B in that equation, okay, because these two are equal to each other, so I can replace one with the other. When we talked about solving systems of equations, okay, we would solve one equation for one variable, and then we would put that in place of that variable in the other equation. We're replacing part of the equation, just a little piece. That's substitution. But transitive, you're replacing an entire side of the equation. See, here we have a plus b equals c, and a plus b equals d. Both c and d are equal to the same thing, so c and d have to be equal to each other. Over here, I've got 3x plus 2y equals 7, and 9x minus 4 equals 7. Both of these are equal to the same thing. Since they're equal to the same thing, they have to be equal to one another. So that's the difference between substitution and transit. The substitution property says you can replace a little piece of something with an equivalent value. The transitive property says if two values are equal to the same thing, then they're equal to each other. You're replacing an entire side of an equation or a congruent space. Okay, now let's take a look at some examples. Okay, we want to identify the property that's illustrated by each of these statements. So right here, I have if RT, angle R, is congruent to angle T, and angle T is congruent to angle P, then angle R is congruent to angle R. Excuse me, angle R is congruent to angle P. Wow, having a little trouble here. What we want to focus on to determine what property is illustrated is what changes from our hypothesis to our conclusion. Okay, well, I start with both angle R and angle P congruent to angle T, and I finish with angle R and P congruent to one another. Guys, that's the transitive property, okay? Two things are equal to one another, excuse me, two values are equal to the same thing or congruent to the same thing means they have to be congruent or equal to one another. Next up, I have if NK, segment NK is congruent to segment BD, then segment BD is congruent to segment NK. What I really wanna focus on is how our hypothesis has changed to arrive at our conclusion, okay? Well, what's different about this and this? It's flipped. It's flipped over that congruence sign. 
And the property that says that we can flip something over the congruent sign is the symmetric property. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more. I have CD, segment CD is congruent to segment CD. Okay, there's no hypothesis in conclusion. All I have is a single statement here. And this single statement says that something is congruent to itself. So the property that says something is congruent to itself, we talked about that, that's the reflexive property. Next up, I have angle Q is congruent to angle V, and if this is true, then I have angle V is congruent to angle Q. And I want to think about what has changed from the hypothesis to the conclusion. Well, what's changed as it is that it has been flipped. It's been reversed over that congruent sign. And the property that says that I can reverse something over the congruent sign is the symmetric property. Okay? So when you're trying to determine which property is used, focus not just on where you are now, but focus on what has changed from previous steps to get you where you are now. Okay, now let's take a look at some complete proofs, start to finish. Okay, we are given that segment AC, excuse me, the length of segment AC is equal to the measure of segment AB plus the measure of segment AB. So this whole segment is equal to this piece plus this piece again. And what we want to prove is that the length of segment AB is equal to the length of segment BC. So we want to prove that this piece is the same length as this piece. So we always need to start with our given. Okay, what is our given information? Well, AC equals AB plus AB. Then all of a sudden, they're throwing in segment BC. Well, segment BC isn't in anything here. It's not in any of our previous statements. So we have to look at the diagram. Okay? And what we're saying here is that if I take this piece and this piece, and I add those together, I get this piece. So one piece plus the other piece equals the whole thing. The property that justifies that is the segment addition postulate. Okay, we had that earlier in this lesson. We had that in previous lessons. Now, next up, I have segment AB, the length of segment AB plus the length of segment AB equals the length of segment AB plus the length of segment BC. Okay, now, all of a sudden, I have one sum is equal to another sum. Now, someone is probably looking at this and thinking, hey, that's the addition property of equality. We're adding something to both sides. But from where? From which of these previous statements are we adding something to both sides? We're not. That's not what's happening here. We're not just adding something to both sides, which is what the addition property of equality says. What we're actually doing is recognizing that this is equal to AC and this is equal to AC. So that allows us to say that these are equal to each other. So the property that says if two values are equal to the same thing, those two values are equal to each other, that's the transitive property. Now, take a look at where we are and where we're going. Okay, we're where we want to be. We have proved that AB equals BC. Okay, but how did we get from here to here? Well, the difference is, if I look at line 3 to line 4, this AB is gone from both sides. I just have this AB and this BC. So what we did was we subtracted AB from each side. And the property that says that we can subtract the same thing from both sides is the subtraction property of equality. Okay? So we've set out what we tried to prove, we are finished. We start with the given as our statement and our reason. We end on exactly what we're trying to prove and we justify every step along the way. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Okay, this one actually asks us to prove two things. We want to prove that if we know M is the midpoint, we want to prove that AB is two times AM and AM is one half of AB. So if we have that M is the midpoint of this segment, we want to prove that the whole, excuse me, 
the whole segment is equal to two times half of it, and that this AM is half of that whole segment. Okay, those are the two things that we're going to try to prove here. So let's take a look. We can show them both on the same proof because they use a lot of the similar, a lot of similar steps. We start out with our given. M is the midpoint of AB. That's what we're given. Now, suddenly, I go from an English sentence to a mathematical congruent statement. Okay, so I need something that allows me to make that change. Well, they're kind of telling you right away what's doing that. They're calling something the midpoint. And if we go back to our list of properties here, there is it, one more. Oh, there we go. Okay. The uh, midpoint theorem says that if M is the midpoint, then those two pieces are congruent to each other. So the reason for this statement is going to be that midpoint theorem, or they like to call it the definition of a midpoint. Either one's good. Definition of a midpoint, midpoint theorem, they're both okay. All right, so now we have a congruent statement. And on the next line, we go from congruent whoop, to equals. So that's our big change. So we want to think about what allows us to make the change from saying these two segments are equal to saying that the length of those segments, excuse me, saying the segments are congruent to saying the length of those segments are equal. Well, that's the definition of congruent segments. Okay, that's what we talked about earlier. Okay, now I say that segment, the length of segment AM plus the length of segment MB equals the length of segment AB. So all of a sudden I'm adding this MB in here. I'm moving some stuff around in this equation, but that's not exactly what's happening, okay? What I'm all of a sudden doing, if I want to say that, excuse me, what some student's going to say is they're going to look at this plus sign, and they're going to say, well, that's the addition property of equality. They're adding MB, but if they're adding MB, then I would have to have another MB over here, and we don't have that. So, what we have to do is look at our diagram, okay? AM plus MB. We're saying this piece plus this piece equals the whole thing. The property that allows us to say that is the segment addition postulate. So don't just look at that line. Look at where that line is coming from. How are you getting there from previous statements? Well, this comes from the diagram. And the diagram says if you add those pieces together, you get, this, you get the whole thing. Okay, so now we we'll look at how we get from statement four to statement five. And what's changing here? Well, what's changing is that this MB is being replaced by AM. Everything else is the same. Well, what's allowing us to do that is we have AM and MB are the same thing. So that a property that allows us to change a piece of the equation is the substitution property. Okay? Now, next line. To get from here to here. Well, I have AM plus AM and I'm replacing that with 2 a.m. That's substitution. Okay, I'm replacing one expression with an equivalent expression. Now, they're saying that this is what we're trying to prove. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Okay, but now I go from line 6 to line 7. And what changes from line 6 to line 7? I go from 2 a.m. to a.m. and a.b. to half a.b. Well, we're dividing both sides by 2. And the property that says we can divide both sides by 2 is the division property of equality. Now, guys, we could say that we're done here, but there's a small problem. Take a look what we have on step 6. We have 2 a.m. equals a.b. Take a look at what we were asked to prove. a.b. equals 2 a.m. So we do need to add one more step here in order to be completely done. Okay, and this will prove A. We can say that AB is equal to 2 AM. This is what we were asked to prove. Now, we need a, a property, something that justifies that. Well, what did we do? We flipped it over that equal sign. So the property that says we can reverse an equation over the equal sign is the symmetric property. And now we're finished. Okay? So always look at how you're getting there from previous statements, not just what that line looks like.
Okay. Let's take a look at one more. Okay, we are given that B is the midpoint of AC. So I have B is the midpoint of this piece, and I have C is the midpoint of this piece, of BD. What I want to prove is that AB is congruent to CD. Okay? Well, start by listing our given information and say that given is the reason. Next up, I go from saying that I have a midpoint, okay, I go from an English sentence, to a mathematical statement. Well, the only thing that's going to let me do that is a definition, property, or theorem. Okay, well, I'm saying that it's the midpoint, and then I'm saying that these two halves are congruent to one another. That's the definition of a midpoint, or the midpoint theorem. Then once again, I do the same thing here. Okay, I say that segment BC is congruent to segment CD. Okay, that is the midpoint theorem, again, or the definition of a midpoint. Either one works. Now, I didn't write this proof. Okay, if I had, I would have put these two together because you'll notice that they are the exact same reason with the exact same intent. I have that something is a midpoint. I'm saying that the two halves of that segment are congruent to one another. So we could have combined those into one. We can leave them as separate too. That's fine as well. Now, take a look at how we're getting from these statements to this one. I have segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Segment BC is congruent to segment CD. Then all of a sudden, I have segment AB is congruent to segment CD. So what's going to allow me to say that those two are congruent to one another? Well, they're both congruent to the same thing. That makes them congruent to each other by the transitive property. Now, I have that those two segments are congruent, but what I'm asked to prove is that the lengths of those segments are equal. So I need to change from a congruent statement down to an equation. And the property that allows me to do that is the definition of congruent segments. Okay? So when we are trying to, set, uh, to complete a proof, always start with what we're given, always end on exactly what we are asked to prove. Only combine steps if they have the exact same reason. If they have the same reason, it's okay to combine them. You can leave them as separate steps as well. Make sure that you have a property to justify every single step, okay? Um, focus on how you are getting there from previous steps and not just what that line looks like. That's how we complete the proofs of segment properties. That's how we're going to complete proofs all year long.